Hello there, it's Jan here from JB Crafts and I'm back today with a new tutorial for you. So thank you for joining me. Uh, welcome to the channel if this is the first time that you've come across me. I am an avid paper crafter and I have been building my YouTube channel now since February and we are heading towards 2000 subscribers so i am absolutely thrilled with the progress so uh, thank you to all of you that's joined me all my crafty friends out there um across you know across the world it still sort of blows my mind a little bit that there are so many people from other countries tuning in so yeah wherever you are in the world a big welcome and a big thank you from me for helping to support the channel and allowing me to sort of love what i do and share mainly what i do so this one today is for my Technique Tuesday collection. It's Tuesday today, so we've got another Technique. And what I've done today, very, very simple design because I wanted to focus on the little coloured panel at the back, which is what's referred to as a floating panel. It's actually strips of cardstock, and this is another one that's great for scrap busting. Uh, strips of cardstock that are attached to acetate, and then they are just um, popped up with a little bit of foam tape. It's hard to get that on the camera, I must admit, but there's just a little bit. And you can raise these as much or as little as you want. I've just got a, a very narrow foam tape on mine. Uh, you could double that up and make it a bit higher. And then I've just kept the white here to keep it fairly simple. And I've made them as little note cards. Now, this one was all done in shades of sort of, um, um, well, neutral, really. There's a little tiny bit of gold in there. It goes down to more of a, a coppery shade, the glitter card mixed with the satin card, the pearlescent card. And, and then I actually did this and repeated it in some pinks now i put way too much pressure on this one when i was cutting it and you can just see where it's actually marked a little bit of the uh, the shiny card so we'll address that today in the tutorial but yeah exactly the same design and then what i'm going to do today is i'm going to make a third one but we're going to use gold today and i thought these would look great you know you could make as many as you want you could go into the silvers into the blues make a set of them as a little set of note cards and then make a box maybe with the same um you know image on the top and have them as a gift set or if you're selling at craft fairs and things like that they're very very easy to make they are um i believe if i remember rightly it was a five yeah a little five by five square uh card blank i'm still trying to use up my um card blanks from my craft boxes that i had when i was working with crafters companion so these are from there they're just a shop bought uh, five by five and I've not put anything in the inside I thought if it's a note card you probably would want to write a note inside as opposed to uh, popping an insert with a sentiment in there so those are the two that I've done we're going to recreate pretty much the same thing but I'm going to go along the lines of the gold today so I'll just pop those over to one side out of the way have those to refer to you don't need many supplies for this and as I say it's a great one for scrap busting so I've been through all my scraps and I've picked out some tones of gold and I've got a couple that are ones ones a sort of more of a mirror card which is a nice reach rich deep gold i've got some of the gold uh, glitter card and then i've got a matte sort of mirror card a satin one that's got a little bit more of a warm gold and then i've got some ivory glitter card as well so those are going to be my four shades of uh, gold and i've cut some of these already but i just wanted to um show you how i actually cut these because i'm wanting five eighths of an inch strip so you can see here i've got the the darker gold the gold um glitter card the the matte one and then the lighter one there now when we're using scraps if you're anything like me i've got the large guillotine here and it's not easy my my guillotine that i've got here i can see the three quarters of an inch mark but then it disappears under the metal piece so just a top tip for cutting those thinner strips is measure the outside piece. So I've got my piece here settled at, it just happens to measure two and three quarter inches. And I'm going to make sure that that's nice and square. So I've got a nice straight edge. And then I'm going to count my five eighths of an inch in from this side. So one, two, three, four, five takes me down to two and one eighth. 
and then I can just line that up that way and I'm cutting the five eighths of an inch off that outside and you get the perfect size strip so just a little top tip there for cutting those strips and then I've, I've sort of made them roughly the same length and these are slightly bigger than what I need uh, to use them I always make them a little bit bigger so I'm going to bring in my uh, it's actually my cutting mat here because I want something that's got a grid on it uh, in order to help me line these up and I've already prepped the back of most of them apart from the one that I've just cut uh, yep and I'm just going to use a little bit of double sided tape on the back of these because we're going to stick these onto a piece of acetate so literally just the double sided tip I find works really well it doesn't need the red line tape I often use red line tape when I'm working with acetate but for this particular technique um, the pressure from die cutting is enough to seal it so that's going to be the order of my strips there and then what I've done uh, is I've cut a piece of acetate slightly bigger than what I need I'm going to cut this down with a stitched square die so I'm just about three and a half inches for the piece of acetate, which is just slightly bigger than my die. My die measures roughly two and seven eighths of an inch square. So I've just chosen this from my nesting dies. It was the nice size that fit, you know, with the rest of the design. Whatever you've got handy, it doesn't have to be a stitch one, it doesn't have to be a square. You can do this with lots. I've seen people do this with circles, all sorts of different shapes. So, yeah, I chose the square, we'll pop that to one side, and then my acetate has the um the film over it. So if you've got that kind of acetate, just be careful and make sure that you take that piece away. Now I am aware that acetate's not the best thing to see on my camera. But I've just laid it down over the grid there and then I'm going to space these out um, roughly where I want them. And I'm going to use my square here because what I want to do is get this one level with the bottom of the square, top one level with the top of the square and then I can space the other two in the middle. So we'll start at the bottom with that nice rich gold mirror card. And I'm just going to pop this one over the acetate using one of the lines on the grid there to get that nice and straight. And the reason I make them a bit bigger is because it's anchored my piece of acetate. Now I've actually got it stuck down to the mat so it's, it's not run, sort of wriggling about when I'm trying to stick uh, things straight. So then we'll take off the next piece of backing tape. And again, I'm just going to pop this in now as a guide so that that's going to be where the bottom cuts. And then this one is going to line up with the top here. So I'm just going to pop that right up near the top. Excuse my head for a second. I just need to make sure that is straight, which it's not. There we go. And stick the top one in. I can move this now. This was just for a guideline so that when I cut it, I've got equal pieces of these inside my square and then we can actually go with the next two colours. So I'm going to take the tape off these ready and the same with this one. And then I'm going to use oops, a daisy, more haste, less speed jam. There we go. I'm going to use this one as a spacer. And pop it upside down just for now because I don't want it to stick just yet until I get roughly an even space. And there's about an eighth of an inch between them. So a roughly an eighth of an inch. And as I say, having that grid underneath just allows you to place them down nice and straight. So again, that one can go in the middle now. And I've got around about the same gap between each one. I'm quite happy with that. So the um, grid has done its trick. I can pop that to one side now. I'm going to chop off a little bit of the excess because it is sticky. But I don't mind if there's a little tiny portion of it sticking over the edge. 
and then we're going to pop this through my die cutting machine now i don't know about you guys i always have issues cutting acetate um so yeah, i've put my metal shim into the mix there so i want to make sure that this is well secure because i don't want it to move and i'm going to line up the edge of this particular die the cutting edge is right around the outside because of the stitch detail so i'm going to line up the edge of the die with the top and bottom of those strips that i've actually put in place and make sure that it is well stuck down before we pop it through the machine and then what i've got is i've got my um, usual cutting plates and i've also popped the metal shim in and then i'm just going to put a little piece of paper around here i've just got to make it made it a little blanket just to protect it from any scarring that may be on my um plates there so we'll pop it inside its little blanket there pop it on the metal and then i've got my usual plate combination on the top and then just bear with me for a second while we pass that through my gemini which is behind me so you can hear the machine there just takes a few seconds big crunch because I've got that extra plate in there and if I remove those out of the way we've got our little sandwich there so take that away that's done its job just stuck a little bit where those bits of tape were and we've actually got our panel cut that we're going to use on the card now now as i say i never get the i don't know whether it's the type of acetate but it never seems to go all the way through but it's cut enough for me to go it's made enough of an impression and all i do is just take my larger scissors and it's really easy to just cut against the edge now where it's actually applied the pressure and just get rid of those extra pieces so again just following that die where it's made the indentation nice straight edges and i'm just going to release the remainder of the acetate there so nice and easy and we've actually got our die cut shape there ready to go okay so i've not put quite as much pressure on it this time which has allowed me to not have as much of the scarring going on on there and then what we want to do is we want to raise this up now on some foam tape so i'm just going to grab my massive massive reel of foam tape from sticks two and this is just one millimeter i tend to just order the one mil and then if i want it any deeper i just put a couple of layers on and all i'm going to do is pop this behind each of those panels so that it's actually hidden and this is what gives the floating element because it's raised up and you can't see the dimension behind it so just on each of those pieces there and this is going to be the top section of our design there so just pop that bit to one side and we've got that good to go there so that's my little panel ready there and then like i said i've got the five inch card here and then i've just cut my panel down to four and five eighths of an inch square i just wanted quite a nice little border around the edge of the white there and then we're going to pop this one on here but just before i do that i just wanted to add some detail and i've gone with my metallic pens i've got these in lots of different colors these are spectrum noir metallic pens and they've got a really nice brush marker on one end, one end so i've actually chosen the one that matches each of the designs so this one was the coppery color and then i've got a pink one that i've done around the pink and then this one's actually gold plate and all i've done is just run it along the edge of the card there minus the uh, extra bit there so again just along the edge so that it picks up a little bit of that metallic color and i'm going to go around each one a couple of times there so we've gone all the way around and now that we've got back to the beginning just darken it up a bit with that second layer and all i've done is just rest the nib against the actual um cardstock and run it along the edge there there we 
we go. And that's now going to allow it to stand out a little bit more away from that card. So I'll just give that a second to uh, just to dry. And then as far as embellishments are concerned, I've just been in my Gemini elements again. These were designed when the uh, when Crafters Companion brought out the Gemini Mini. And they're really nice sort of small elements that you can use in your mini. But they're great for embellishments. They're just the right height. So I've used this one here and I've just cut it a couple of times out of white cardstock and then stuck it together to give me that really nice embellishment that we're going to lay over the top. And I've kept the embellishment the same on all the cards. I wanted there to be, you know, sort of a theme in there. So not only are we working with the little floating panels, we've actually got the same element here that's going to go over the top. So I'm going to get my acrylic glue at the ready, pop those to side for a minute, and I've got a little bit of tape already on the back i've actually run out of my tape runner at the minute i need to get uh, some more so i've just got some double-sided tape on the back of here and we're just going to position this one they open just like a book fold as normal and then just get this one positioned so that we've got a nice even border all the way around the edge there so that one's nice and flat then we've got our panel with the tape on, so I just need to release that backing tape off each one of the strips there. And then we can add this to the front of our card. So we just get that backing off. And then we're good to go. And I've just dropped this into that top left hand corner making sure that your colours are in the order. This would look great in sort of rainbow colours as well, or you could do a series of warm tones. So you could have the yellows, the oranges, the pinks or the reds. You could have the cooler tones with the blues, the greens, the lilacs. There's the sort of endless um, ways that you could put these colours together. You could actually start with the rainbow colours and start, you know, do do half of it on one, half of it on the other. And, you know, using just using up those scrap pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop it down probably Probably about just over a quarter of an inch from the side and the top there. So I want it in that top left corner and then give that a good press down. And then we're going to bring in our embellishment. <coughs> and I'm just going to use my acrylic glue on this because it's going on to all those different surfaces. I'm just going to pop some of the acrylic glue just in places it doesn't have to have every element stuck down as long as it's anchored sort of in the middle there um, it should have enough to to keep it and, and again right at the bottom is going to hang off so I didn't actually need to go that low down but here we're just going to let that go slightly over the top at an angle there and then I'm just going to put my block on there for a second to press it down and then the last thing, as always, is the little gems. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a bit of a frog in my throat today. So I've chosen the gold and a couple of pearl ones uh, just to sort of accent it. This one, I went for that sort of um, neutral colour with the pearl. Five again, just drawing it across the image. This one, I've gone for shades of pink. That one's decided it wanted to move by the looks of it. There we go. So, yeah, I've just got different shades of pink to echo what's gone on on here. And then this one, as I say, I've got the gold and the neutral one again. So all I'm going to do then is position these across that sentiment again. So I've actually got a couple on the card at the bottom and then I've come up here. One, two and one up at the top there. And then I'm going to use my pickup tool. And I think we'll go with, let's have a look, we need to put one of those at the top, one at the bottom. Yeah, we'll go with gold and then a neutral one. And then we'll go with the gold again, the neutral and then the little gold one at the top there. And they can just dry on there. I'll try not to move it. I think I've just done the pink one. I think that one's got moved. Uh, this one was done a little while ago. 
Uh, but I've just made the pink one and I think I've just managed to catch it here. But the glue dries clear on it, so we should be OK. So we've got our series going on here now. We've got a nice little collection. As I say, these would great make, make a, a great, you know, sort of gift. Pop these into a, you know, measure the dimension of the height of them when they're stacked together and make a nice little box. I'd probably go for something like a, a five and a half inch square box and then just see what, what depth it is, depending on how many you've got in there. They'd make a really, really nice gift. So, yeah, that little floating element, just using my square nesting die to create that shape there. And this was the first one that I did in those neutral tones, little bit of sort of bronzy element in there. Then we did the pink one. I did this off camera and then we've just made the gold one. So really nice little collection with that floating element for today's technique. Hope you've liked these. Hope it's given you some ideas. Again, as I say, great for that scrap busting. Get all these little pieces out. I save all the bits of, uh, I mean, if I show you my, this is my, one of my favourite gold card stocks is the matte mirror card or the satin card in the gold. And all the scraps are saved, no matter what they size they are. I've got little bits of glitter card and die cuts in there. And I go to this every time. Perfect for this kind of um, technique here where you just want little bits of cardstock. So, yeah, if you've enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up for me. And if you haven't subscribed there, maybe you could help me get to that 2000 followers. Uh, I don't think it'll be long now. And yes, I'll be back very, very soon with a new tutorial for you. So enjoy the rest of your day. Bye now.